Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland This is Let Me Bore You To Sleep Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes Eyes, eyes, eyes Um, I think I hear my tap dripping. Hmm. Anyway. Wow, just look at the news. There's been a Milky Way explosion. I haven't had a Milky Way in years. Used to be classed, didn't they? Milky Ways, you eat them in between dinner. And it doesn't fill you up. But it's like a little snack. But I don't know, do they still make them? So it must be, if there's an explosion, it must be becoming really popular... So, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. I have... On my website, there's lots and lots and lots of recordings. There's 1,000 and... 90 something recordings on there that you can download and stream for free and uh, there's also a testimonial page you can read what other people have said about the the stuff that I do or you can leave your own testimonial telling other people about how you know, your your experience of what I do, and there's what other pages are there on there? There's a latest page. I mean, it's the latest page, but it's the latest page. It says late. It's called latest. L A T. You know, latest. Um which basically lists the last 20 recordings. I think 20 is enough. I could have had probably 100, but I think 20 is enough. So you can just see the last 20 recordings that I've made. Of course, you can find them also in each um, category on the right-hand side of the page. But there's also a category page as well. And I do <laughs> I do realize that um most people listening to this and my other recordings are listening via a podcast, you know on Spotify, iTunes uh, there's lots of different ones. Tune in uh, podcast. Is it a podcast? Something I don't know. So there's lots of different podcast hosts or you know online and most people listening will be listening using a phone. Whether Android or iPhone. Well I should say iOS, shouldn't I? But You know, so whether it's an Android, whether it's an iPhone, whether it's, you know, just basically that's the majority of the people that listen to my recordings generally seem to be listening on phones, then tablets and then laptops, lastly. So people using my website would probably also be using the phone 
or a tablet. And I only really visit my website and look at it as it is on the uh, PC or the, you know, the laptop. A part of that reason is because from an eyesight perspective I like things to be big you know bigger it's just easier to, you know to read and navigate for me personally and also because I'm just so damn old that <laughs> I was going to say I was brought up on the internet being on, on computers but I wasn't brought up with the internet but I know you know it took me a while to get around using phones for you know website pages and stuff and I still don't really very often use it use the phone for that occasionally because if I'm sitting down on my big black squeaky chair and I'm so I'm watching a film and there's an actor and I want to I'm thinking oh, I know him so what I do is you know I do a little google and uh have a little Google, quick Google with myself and search for people. And Wikipedia is quite good on on a phone. The way they you know they've got everything quite organised. So it's although it's little writing. It's the benefit of being on a big screen is it's bigger writing. But tablets I don't really use very often. Apart from the tablets that I take every day, but I've got um, I used to have an iPad and it broke, which is weird. It's I had it a long time ago, back in two thousand and Um, 12 I think it is so 2012 I moved to a new home and I didn't have any internet so I decided to get a contract with I think it was called Orange back then it wasn't EE yet so it's Orange the Orange Network and uh I'm surprised they changed the EE because they used to have a really, a really good slogan. Well, it's not really good. I mean, I'm not. I didn't get excited about it. There was no, you know, there was no. Uh, I wasn't stimulated by the the slogan, but it was the future's bright, the future's orange. I mean, that's a that's a slogan they could keep going forever, couldn't they? The future's bright, the future's EE doesn't quite work but uh, I think it's because well it's they they were bought by T-Mobile or they bought T-Mobile they bought T-Mobile and another company got together and they kind of rebranded I remember T-Mobile wow do you remember T-Mobile? Wow. I used to... Oh, God, I remember that. Back in, what, the late 90s. T-Mobile was the... the top mobile phone place for pay-as-you-go. I think Orange was the top 
it became the top by about 2001 uh, for contracts but pay as you go T-Mobile was the one and to get people really like hooked they gave people the contracts and promising them uh, free calls free texts and all that stuff uh, to any number uh, forever for life for I don't know twenty pound a month or whatever it was and after a couple of years they realized that they'd made a mistake and they they stopped offering that to people but not they couldn't stop offering it to people that already had signed up for it and uh, people would start getting letters from T-Mobile asking them if they'd sell the contract back to them I've heard some claims and I don't know how mu how much of them are true because you know exaggeration definitely seems to be a part of society Andre sorry about that Andre's he's moved his he's he's always up to something he's always letting off a bit of wind he um his bag was the other side of the room a couple of days ago and he's now moved it to this side of the room underneath the little table I've got next to my black chair so he's right next to where I am and I've got no idea why he did it it's almost I don't know like he's hiding it or something which doesn't really makes sense because I know where he is he can't really hide from me or he can but it means hiding behind the cooker because that's one place that I probably wouldn't look at first if I was looking for him but he does play hide and seek sometimes likes to hide from me especially if he Sometimes if I'm running a bath and he, he, he kind of may think um, could be for me, I think I'm going to hide and disappear for a while and he runs off. As I said, run a bath, I should explain what I mean by that because in some parts of the world you might not call it run a bath isn't it is it in America you call it draw a bath if I was going to draw a bath I'd have a piece of paper and a pencil that's drawing a bath then you could say running a bath that would be like going for a marathon wouldn't it and a little bath with little little legs running around next to you or something just run in the bath I don't know what other ways of filling the bath up with water I suppose that's a way to say it oh yeah getting my in my shed tomorrow my shed is coming my shed is coming my shed is coming tomorrow tomorrow my shed is coming tomorrow and it's going to be my recording studio I almost wish I'd bought a bigger one now because I think it's going to be a little bit of a squeeze for me it's 5 foot by 6 foot 
been a six foot prop height would be easy. And I think this six foot is how long it is, not how high it is. If it's definitely high, it'll be. I imagine it's probably six foot high, if not more. Well, I'm five foot eight, so it's not, it's not going to be a problem for me. And it's not like I'm going to be inviting guests. So it'll be fine. But five foot wide. I don't know how wide I am. So I'm sure I'm not five foot wide. Six. So it should be enough room for me to you know, sit there comfortably with you know, a few inches either side of my shoulders. So it should be fine. I kind of like the idea of having a desk in there. Or something that is fitted into the shed that just, you know, like in a bar where you, like in a bar, a pub or a bar, where there's always that one bit at the side where they can open it up. So it's a bar, but then they pull it open and then you can walk through it and then they put it down again. Have something like that. Not not a bar, but like a, a desk that can be, a de- so I could just get in the other side of it without having to climb underneath. And then I'm thinking, once I've got it, and uh, my friend's gonna help me put it up. And then, I'm going to fill it with the soundproof and material foam that I've already bought and currently is all over my wall in the living room so I need to take that off the wall the problem with that is once I take it off the wall I've already taken some off it's left these or basically wherever the glue was it's left a black uh, bit of foam mark on the wall it almost looks like a pattern, like some random pattern. So it doesn't look awful. It doesn't look wonderful, but it doesn't look awful. It could almost be a design, but it's not a design. But it could be, but it's not. But it could be, but it's not. But it could be. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, but it's n- yeah, but it could be. You know, of course it's not if you know it's not. But if you didn't know it's not, you might think it it might be. See, it's it's it depends. Someone might walk in here and think, "Oh, what a great design." Someone else might walk in and think, "Oh." Uh, what on earth happened there? I think it looks like it might be a design. Because I don't know if you remember in the old days, <laughs> there used to be a, a thing people used to put on the walls called wallpaper. And it's something that we had when I was a kid. And everybody pretty much had wallpaper on the wall. You put it up, and it'd be. It could be all kinds of different uh, colours and patterns. I had, if I'm correct, when I was about. Here, Andre is now running around. I was about 10. I'm sure my wallpaper was Superman. 
like pictures of Superman flying. Pretty sure. I quite like to have that again. That'd be a really good wallpaper to have. Wallpaper with the Avengers superheroes and stuff. I might look at getting that. Yeah. Now that would be nice. You hear him running around again? this whenever I do a recording he just wakes up and starts running around I don't know why he won't be able to do it anymore when I get my shed oh no <laughs> I'll be able to just I'll probably have it in the bedroom because there's more room in there because then I don't have to see it Apart from when I'm asleep, but then when I'm asleep, I've got my eyes closed. Um, not that I, I worry about seeing it, but just it'll be out of the way. I can leave Andre in here while I go into the bedroom. And then when I'm in the bedroom, I can go into the recording studio. And hopefully, it'll be soundproof. And I'm going to have it so that. There won't be any light though, which would be a bit weird, but I'll figure that out, I'm sure it's get some kind of a lamp or something. But the, uh, I'm going to hopefully put the soundproofing foam on the outside of the shed as well as the inside, and maybe if there's enough, enough space, there probably won't be actually. So perhaps double layer it on the inside, but it's I've definitely got enough to fill the inside, but I reckon I might have enough to fill the outside as well. And that'll be really cool. But I know as soon as Andre gets in the in the bedroom and sees the shed, he'll be he'll just want to go inside. That's all he'll want to do. That'll be his his life's ambition is to get inside that shed. And the thing is, if I let him inside, I kind of know the first one of two of the first things it'll do when he gets in there. I think some people call it marking their territory. <laughs> Which I don't really want that, especially as I'm going to be sitting in there with no air. Well, no, like incoming air. There will there will be oxygen, but it will be quite stuffy, a bit too stuffy to have. Yeah, I'm thinking actually that means that I need to really leave the door open when I'm not in it. But I don't want to. I don't want to close the bedroom door all the time. Because he loves the bed. He loves sleeping on the bed. And he's got toys in there as well. And, uh, I, you know, I don't want to take that space away from him. He likes being able to go in every single room. He loves going in the bathroom, loves it in the kitchen, in the hallway. It's quite weird, really, but he. I don't know if he loves the hallway as much as he loves the bed. Although, a few years ago, well, not maybe last year even, he used to have his bag right near the front door and he used to sleep in there all the time. That used to be his place. But hasn't done that for a long time. I'm not sure why that happened. I wonder why. Oh, he's now arrived. He's now... 
climbed up on me. Things, as soon as I go to stroke him, he goes to run away from me as if I'm going to turn him into a kebab or something. What are you going on about, Andre? I'm just giving you a cuddle. Even if you do stink a bit. You got you are a bit smelly. You are a bit smelly. Yes, you are. You got a smelly belly. Yes, you have. You hear what he said then? He said, you should smell yourself, mate. He's very rude. That's it. Just lay there. Just relax. Just relax. Beautiful little boy. Yeah. I've got him laying down on his back now. And I'm just holding him. And stroking the side of his cheek. But now he's gone. He's let off a little bit of a pong. Which he does now and then. It's not a strong pong. It's just like a bit of an aroma. He rarely lets off a really, really bad one anymore. He used to a lot more when he was younger. And there's been times in the past when he's climbed on me and he's he's basically almost turned into a skunk. And he's let off a smell and I've had to change the t-shirt. Not his t-shirt, the, the one that I was wearing. And oh, I was like, Phew. had to open the windows. That wasn't as interesting as I thought it was going to be, that story. You know when you're about to tell someone something and you think, they'd enjoy this. I'll wait until I tell them this, they're going to, this is going to brighten up their life. And you tell them and you start talking and you get like three quarters of the way through what you're about to tell them. You start to realise that it isn't all it could be. It's, it's not quite as satisfying as you perhaps originally thought. Yeah. So when I get the shed, I know I'm going to start. I don't know if I. I'd like to put it into the storage room, which my friend thinks funny is funny because he thinks I should just turn a storage room into a recording studio by putting the phone. Uh, soundproof and foam on the walls and technically that would make a lot more sense really would however I want to still be able to use the storage room as a storage room as well and the storage room is a bit too big to use as a recording studio as far as soundproofing it there needs to be a smaller space. And it's not a mansion, you know, the storage room isn't, it's not like a football field, it's not that big. But it's the way it's shaped and there's air vents that lead to the front of the house where the traffic's going past. So there is sound coming in. And I don't want to block off the air vents. And also because of the way that the storage room is shaped, it's like an L shape. If it didn't, if it wasn't L shaped and that space was length rather than, not girth, but if it wasn't in an L shape, but it's just one long shape. It'd, be, it'd look really big when you went in there because other people's flats in this building they haven't got the L-shaped bit they've just got the long bit but I've seen I've only seen two 
two people's storage rooms here in the, this block that I live and both of them have just this big long space it's very high as well you know my ceilings are quite high I know technically from my height anything's high but if you was to stack stuff Uh, as in like storage I suppose if you used to use it as a storage room and stack stuff on crates you get a lot of stuff in there but more so with the other flats because they're long because mine's L shaped it's a little bit harder to get to stuff you know because if you put stuff in when you get in it blocks it from getting around I think so what I'm going to do when I get the shed I'm going to measure it and if it's possible I'm going to put it into the storage room as long as I'm able to get into the shed or get into the storage room there needs to be enough space which I'm not sure if there will be realistically there needs to be enough sp no I don't think there will be actually no I don't think there will I don't think this I don't think the room's wide enough definitely long enough even with the L shape it's long enough but it's not I don't think it's going to be wide enough to have the shed in there and to be able to get in because the electric um, I, I need to get into that storage room because there's important stuff in there uh, regarding electric stuff so that needs access needs to be gotten so I'm not sure I mean, ideally, really, I don't, I don't need it to be long. I've never, never been impressed by length. I just, I'd, I'd like it to be like a box shape, you know, just big enough for me just to sit in. Kind of the size of this chair, you know, but with a little bit more space, so that I can in and out of the chair basically and a little bit of space either side of the chair so I'm not so I can move my hands around I'm not you know boxed in too much but at the same time I don't want this chair because it's too squeaky and it will it kind of gets in the way of the whole process of having a quieter background if all you hear is squeak, squeak, squeak. I know the, the, the chair doesn't actually say squeak, 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 but you know, squeaking-ishness of it. And... I think it would be good but then I was speaking to Rachel Rachel sent me a, a comment uh, a, a, a message on Facebook uh, mentioning getting a, a circle of light thing because I did talk I think briefly about possibly making videos in there which would involve having a very bright light inside the shed especially as there's no light in there at all and I could have it attached to 
a cord because I could just drill a hole through the wall or drill a hole underneath the the door so it just slides under the door you know like that uh, so that'd be fairly easy to do I was going to say it wouldn't be the first hole that I've drilled but I don't know that just I don't own a drill but drilling holes is fairly easy isn't it I imagine especially through doors not through doors specifically but I mean I'm just like a wooden door or a a partition <laughs> I don't know Just you, it's, it's easy enough to drill a hole that's what I'm saying so that the wire can go through and <laughs> And yeah, that's it really. But then, how would the plug go through? That's why I think I'd need to do it, make it so it could go underneath the door. Because I'm not taking a plug off. I don't know how to. I don't know how to put plugs together. That's something that I don't involve myself in. Nothing electrical. I won't touch it. Nope. 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 Changing a light bulb. Nope, don't like doing that either. Don't like don't like electrical things. I like electrical things. I just don't like electrical things. No, I like electrical things. I just I don't like the 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 electrical side of the electrical things. See, I like television, but I don't. You know. I don't like tuning it. It's pretty much the same thing, is it? But I just like things to work. It, does it have to be that complicated? Why can't things just work? That's it. Just work. If you buy a toaster, the toaster should just work. Like my toaster, I chucked it out because kept short circuiting the whole flat why it's just a toaster it's not like I'm making toast all day every day pretty much on a, a weekly basis I'd maybe toast um, tea cakes like once a day that'd be it it's not a big pile of like 300 tea cakes it's two tea cakes two tea cakes two tea cakes it's two tea cakes cut in half make it four slices I feel like I'm making a, a maths tuition for two year olds or something Two tea cakes split in half. How does how much does that make, children? That's right. It makes more than three. Less than a nine. Yes, less than nine. More than three. It's not less than nine. It's four. Well, four is less than nine, isn't it? Oh yes. Oh no. Can't compute. Yeah, so that would be good. All I want is the shed to be built. She could come. I don't know. It would be nice if something just folded. Something just folds, and you can just unfold it, and it's done. That's what I want. Like a flat pack, which that's how it will be delivered. But I want a flat pack where you can just pull it up. Like a what's those things? Those tents that you can just unzip and they just pop up, pop up tent. Practically impossible to put away again, but when they pop up, it's like instant. It's like wow, and then you laying in it at night and it's raining and you realise why it's so cheap as you have a nice little shower 
while you're sleeping. Pop up tents. I think there's this uh, misconception that these, what are they called? A lot of people go to festivals and say, yeah, festivals, that's it. A lot of people go to festivals and hundreds, if not thousands of tents, pop-up tents are left when people leave. They just leave the tents there. And there's this, I think, a misconception that the reason they're left there is because they're so difficult to pack away because the pop-up ones are just, and they are difficult, but that's not the reason why they're left left because they're rubbish it's because after four days of having no proper cover from the elements you never want to see that tent again I'm guessing I had a tent once I left it as well. I did. I took a tent, bought it, went to there's a place called Buddha Field. It's a festival in Somerset. And Somerset, if no one's ever been there, it's a beautiful place. Beautiful part of the country. And it's it's also very weathery. It's it's beautiful, but it's not guaranteed. Uh, the festival was in, I think, July. End of June, July, and... I know there's, there's no guarantee anywhere to have... Well, I suppose California are. That's quite guaranteed. Nice weather, I think. Um, They could use the futures bright, the futures orange there, couldn't they? Because they don't they make oranges in California. I don't make I don't mean make them, but you know, not in a factory. Well, do you? I work in an orange factory. What do you do? I put the peel on. Oh, wish I could do that. I'm I'm stuck on the putting the pips in department. Oh. Again, I've, I went nowhere. I just thought, oh, that, that sounds, sounds like a good idea. I'll start pretending to work in a factory, making oranges in California. But I didn't go anywhere. I was kind of, oh, mildly embarrassed. I just wish I hadn't, hadn't mentioned it. I'm going to try and backtrack now, back to tents. Maybe I could have a conversation between the two people in the factory. I oh, see so you put pips in, do you? I said, yeah. Uh, you, know, you put the, the peel on, do you? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, that's nice. I said, yeah. And, uh, so, you go on holiday this year? Yeah, I'm going tenting. You're going tenting? What's tenting? Tenting, where you go out and you you live in a tent. Do you mean camping? Yeah, but I call it tenting. Why? Because I'm unique. And I like to say things that are a little bit different. A little bit woo, a little bit wah, you know. I like to uh, challenge society's norms. Oh, okay, cool. So you're going, to, you're going camping then? So, no, tenting. Okay, you're going tenting. Oh, that reminds me of when I went camping in Somerset and the Buddha field. See, found a segue. And uh, wasn't forced at all, that wasn't. All came naturally. And I went to this Buddha field thing. The whole point of it really was I just finished my degree.
and it was almost a celebratory thing. So it was 2010. I finished a degree in June, uh, whatever date it was, and then me and my friend, uh, she was, I knew her from Buddhism, but also uh, she was a counsellor, but she was in the year ahead of me. So she'd already qualified and got her degree. and um, So I went up with her and her daughter. We went up to, travelled up to Somerset. Long old journey. She drove and I, I bought a tent, pop-up tent. And we went there. And... I don't remember much of the journey. I think she was talking about stuff, and I was talking about stuff. You know, we had I suppose conversation. Yeah, had a conversation, and when we got there, she just she set her tent up. She had a big, big tent, it was like proper. I was going to say professional tent, but I don't know if there is such a thing, but it's more like a marquee than a tent. It was, it was a tent. And it was really nice. And I had my little tiny pop-up tent, which was... It wasn't really big enough for me. I could get in it, but... You know, there was no stretching. Not that I was going to do yoga inside it or anything. But it was just, yeah, it was, it was all right. I'm not, I think if I was going to go camping, I'd like to be in a big tent. You know, something, and I'd like someone else to put it up. Don't want to put a tent up myself. And uh, you gotta have limits. You got we gotta have rules in life. So then, what happened is I I put my tent up. Everything was going all right. Although we went together, we travelled together. She just went and did her own thing, and I did my own thing. We weren't like hanging out together or anything. And. I knew a few people that were there uh, that were going as well so I kind of spent a little bit of time with them and everything and it was it was okay it was okay yeah but and I had this little chair that I used to walk around with and I'd sit in it. I think it might have been a deck chair. I think I took a deck chair with me. How weird. Wow, I was walking around with a deck chair. I don't remember that. But I just had this image of me just sitting down in random places. But the weather was nice bit windy, a bit windy, just a little bit windy, but nice, nice temperature, fairly sunny, and the first day was nice, you know, it was there, had the evening, that was nice, got up the next day, had something to eat, you know, it's You know, the toilet, I don't want to talk about the toilet, but, you know, it was, it was, it was all right. Um, I did need a break, but on reflection, it should have been in a hotel somewhere. I just need, I don't, yeah, but it's, I think getting in touch with nature can be really lovely. 
for those that can uh, tolerate it. Um, I like nature. I suppose I'm a bit like grandparents are with grandchildren. They're brilliant to have, but great to give back. I'm a bit like that with nature. You know, I like I like it, but I'm happy to let. I don't. I'm not. You know, not too attached. I like to let it go. So I love walking through fields, but then I like getting to the pavement again. I don't love getting to the pavement. I don't get excited. I don't kind of. My heart doesn't like beat really fast. Like, Ooh, as I'm walking to, you know, seeing the pavement in sight, you know, it doesn't excite me. But it's nice to have that degree of stability. I think that a pavement can offer, uh, or ground, concrete ground, ground, a road, you know, something that's solid, rather than a. I don't know, some fields are a little bit gooey, aren't they? Some of the the mud is a bit gooey, a bit ooh, a bit sticky, a bit sinky. It's like ooh. All I can hear is that tap. Can you hear it in the background? It's like beep 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 beep. And what else? Oh yeah, uh, so we got there. A lot of it just... I, I didn't... really like it, actually. Because some of the people... and the there was like... it seemed like a lot of people trying to make money not offering their services but trying to make money out of it and I kind of didn't expect that at uh, what's called Buddha Field it's supposed to be a Buddhist festival but there was clearly well I don't know just wasn't really because I've been to Buddha f- um, another Buddha Field festival before but it was a it was more of a local one and that was really nice I really enjoyed that but this was different it was very much bigger but at the same time yeah much differenter as well and I'm trying to think I so the first day, I don't. I think we got there probably afternoon time. So had the evening, and yeah, it was good. The next day, had breakfast somewhere. Can't remember where. And uh, <clears throat> it started to get windy, and then it started to get windier. And it started to get windier still. And raining. And it was really, it was basically, it became torrential rain and gale force winds. And there was a warning, there's like a weather warning. And we were all told that we should the part of the field that I was in was being evacuated so I obliged you know I said okay there was part of me thinking I'm heavy enough nothing's going to blow me away I mean, literally if I, if I laid on the ground I'm not going to get blown away not by any wind that occurs in this country. But there's something about being inside a tent. 
it seems to turn into a balloon. <laughs> it seemed to, and I could feel. I mean, if I hadn't been laying in the tent, the tent would have been gone. And I could feel it, and I could feel it moving my body from side to side. And then I start just thought, oh, I'm not sure about this. So anyway, I got out, and there was. They asked they, the some people in the truck were coming along, saying, "You need to get out. You need to go to the other field where it's safe." And they had this. Uh, set up like a refugee camp where people were just sleeping all together in this uh, big uh, marquee thing which was really looked like it was going to get blown down as well but we were just all laying there in wet clothes all night and very strange and I wake up well I didn't really get much sleep to be fair but as soon as it was morning, I got got up, went back into the field, my own field, and the weather had calmed down. It was it was really quite a nice day, but it was still windy. But it was quite sunny, and I my tent was still there. <laughs> Believe it or not. But the other tent wasn't. My friend's tent is gone. And I thought, oh, because that would make sense that a bigger tent would get blown further because more air could get inside it. I don't know if that's logical, but. Um, so I didn't know what to do because I got no way of getting home. I didn't know if it had been blown down or if she would left because basically I thought oh no and I said to, actually you know what I said to, to other people around do you know what's happened to that tent it's gone and they, they said oh no she packed up and I thought she would left without me I thought she would left without me and as it turns out she was looking for me and she said, I'm going. And I said, yeah, I figured that because you packed your stuff away and you were looking for me. And she said, uh, do you want to come back or are you going to make your own way back? I said, no, I'll come back now. And she said, what about your tent? I said, do not mention my tent. She said, why? I said, I don't know, just trying to be dramatic. She said, haven't we had enough drama for one day? I said, yes. So I... I already had my bag packed. To be fair, I hadn't even unpacked it. Because the size of the tent, you're living out of a suitcase, you can't you can't unpack. It, wasn't a, it was a bag, not a suitcase. So I just said, all right, I'm ready. Got in. And we left. So I think we were there for... My memory is we were there for one night. No, two nights. So the first night was fine. And through the day... But the second night... Ooh! Then we left. But apparently, after we left, because the weather really improved, and more people were actually coming along, as we were leaving, people were entering, and some of the people, as I was packing up and getting ready to go, they were like being really friendly to me, and they were hanging up their wet clothes, and you know, they got soaked through the night, day before, and I think it might have been quite a nice experience had I stayed but you know getting back would have been very difficult especially just it's, it's a long way I don't know why that tap's still going it's 
slept a lot today. Just one of those, well, yesterday rather. Just one of those Sunday things. Just, I tend to relax on a Sunday. Just I'm trying to relax every day, really. But you know, Sunday is kind of specific for that to relax. So anyway, I'm going to go. Thank you for allowing me to bore you and remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.